family member. Um, she um, was had been a, a very fun, high functioning scholar athlete in college. She, in her twenties, um, um, had then became diagnosed with um, a mental illness, and ten years later, she was taking ten drugs daily. And um, at that time. Uh, she would call me every day on the phone saying, you know, is everything going to be okay? And I felt so helpless in trying to help her because I really didn't understand. All I knew was that she was watching all of her friends advance in their careers and she was on disability and could not hold down a job. And um, so I knew that I had to look into what she was putting into her body. And that was the beginning of a lot of reading and research. And, um, uh, coming together with my filmmaking partner, Wendy, and we read the very first book we read was by Robert Whitaker called Anatomy of an Epidemic, and it just it, it blew us away and shocked us. And at that point, we realized, wow, this is no longer a personal quest. It's become a mission to get this, what we felt was a very untold story out there. So the DSM-5, which is its current version, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, which basically puts people's mental and emotional states, for lack of a better word, into categories. It allows for psychiatrists, psychologists to be able to put labels onto different conditions. And one of the pitfalls of it over time is that really it's turned into a process that allows for billing. All the while I was physically ill from something that I didn't, I couldn't get treatment for because there was no services, but also running convoys three to four times a week, getting shot at, worrying about death that way. So after about six months, I finally was medically evacuated out of Iraq. And 13 years later, I've been put on more than 43 psychiatric drugs. I've had seven hospitalizations and um, I'm four and a half years off of meds, but I suffer from like neurological damage from them, which I would have never believed unless it happened. He told me I need to go see a psychiatrist, and I had never seen a psychiatrist before. I, you know, it's just not something I, I was interested in. And, uh, and unfortunately, that day led me down a path of destruction. Parents that I deal with, are coming in with trauma on top of trauma, loss on top of loss, grief on top of grief, grief. And that's not as, I'll say, easily measurable for billing purposes. And so we end up getting caught in a rut. And you know, the DSM is what it is. And you know, even with the changes that have been made, you know, we can go back and forth around what's missing, what's not being captured. And I think one of the big things comes back to trauma. It's essential to remember that in a healing capacity, it's not a simple fix to treat one who is suffering from something that may be unaware, that they're unaware of from a conditional point of view. In other words, if I am sad, it's called depression. But only does it, it only becomes severe depression when it is allowed to fester. Medication is a simple, quick fix. And to be quite frank, pharmaceutical companies are running the medical profession into um, just a quick fix modality in the emotional uh, support of people, which I totally disagree with. Emotional support really re requires building the relationship that is necessary to get to the center of the condition. 